Hello everybody, welcome to another video. In this video we are going way, way off track here as to the normal stuff. This here in front of us is Hammersmith Broadway. I was born in Hammersmith 57 years ago yesterday. Yes, yesterday the 6th of June. And the 6th of June, as most of you should know, if you don't know, then you should be ashamed of yourself. Because on the 6th of June 1944 was D-Day, or the Normandy Landing, some people like to call it as well. Where it's a massive part of our history and the world's history as well in, in defeating the Germans in World War II. It was like the beginning of the end of the war, this this Normandy landing was like the beginning of the end of the war. Now I know that this is a dash cam channel and there is a method to my madness here. So stick with me on this because what they did that day, I can never see happening again. I cannot see anyone coordinating all the allies in doing something like this when we can't even organize anything in our own country, never mind getting all the allies involved to coordinate all of that on one day must have been a nightmare, but they done it so well. It was like I say, it was the start of the end of the world war. But nowadays that could never happen because it would go into parliament. It would end up in three or four months later and they still won't agree. By that time, the Germans would have taken over the whole world before our politicians would have got their head out of their ass and sorted something out. Very different nowadays to what it was back then. So I will get back on track in a minute to doing some driving stuff, but like I say, the 6th of June was a very special day, not just because of me being born, but, but D-Day landings as well. Now, before I do that, as we go back to Hammersmith here, I'm going to show you something else what the 6th of June is famous for as well. This little guy. Yes, the Omen. He's famous for being born on the 6th of June as well, having the markings of the 666 and being... A baby that was born in the 60s I too have got the 666 the sign of the beast yeah make of that as you will but it did give me uh, the nickname the omen for quite a few years I've got to say especially as I've got a scar on the back of my head it's not the 666 it's a nice big scar there where some soppy cow hit me over the head with a tennis racket when I was younger and the fact that the original omen was made in the 70s was filmed in Putney, or a part of it was filmed in Putney, a stone's throw away from Hammersmith. Anyway, as promised, I'm going to show you now my motorbike with me when I was 17 years old. So this picture is now 40 years old. That's me obviously kneeling down next to the bike. That's my dad and my brother. And um, none of us look actually very happy. I think we were being pestered by our mum to actually have a picture of her three men all together. I don't know where my sister was. She was probably out shoplifting or something. So there you go. I revealed my face. All right, it's 40 years old and I look absolutely nothing like that now. I didn't even look like that then. It's a really bad picture, but there you go. I revealed my face. So getting back to Hammersmith where I grew up, this resembles nothing of the place where I grew up. It, none of that in front of us was there. That's all new or newish. Um, there was a road to the left hand side of us that went round the Hammersmith Odeon. Now the Hammersmith Odeon as it was named back then is now the Hammersmith Apollo where they do all the concerts and they do Britain's Got Talent is also filmed in there where people from outside Britain win Britain's Got Talent. I don't know how that works but it does. Anyway I've gone off track yet again. This here Hammersmith Broadway as a young lad there was no traffic lights there was no road markings there was no yellow box junctions, anything like that. There was nothing on here. But it's all to do with money, isn't it? Yellow box junctions bring in money. So hopefully while I was waffling on there, you saw that cyclist go through the red light and you saw the van go into the cycle box. Both not allowed. But it doesn't stop them doing it. Now, coming round here, all like I say, there was no traffic lights here when I was a young lad. All these road markings and signs, they were not there. People just got in the correct lane. Now, I mess up here because I've gone past a stop line and I can't see through that bus. I'm turning left at the next left. Now, that guy that was in the cycle box is right directly behind me now. And he is a massive prat. He really, really is. Now, as you can see, he's gone past a stop line too. 
and they've got a green man so they can walk he's blocked it i've gone past the stop line and i've not blocked anything now you need to listen to him use the horn Now, I'm going to show you that from the front and see how much of a misuse of the horn that was and what a bell end he is. I have not tampered with any of the sound here. I've just zoomed in on him to show you what a fucking total bell end that is. And now I'm going to show you what I was looking at when he was using the horn. Now you tell me, where was I supposed to go? And look when I've gone, look where we're going, to the next set of traffic lights. Well done, what a fucking idiot that is. He must be the pride and joy of that company. Now I'm gonna cast my mind back a bit here because all these traffic lights here wasn't here when I was a lad growing up. And funny enough, there was no traffic waiting here neither. There was no cycle lane to the left hand side of the road there, we had two lanes to coming round here no traffic lights and there was no cycle lane now i don't mind having cycle lanes for the thousands and thousands or is it millions and millions of cyclists that use them have a little look at this clip and count how many cyclists use this cycle lane with a mountain of traffic behind me a load of traffic in front of me and believe it or not, there are bus stops down this road as well. So obviously, we are just all waiting. And then we get Sadiq Khan, the fucking Muppet that he is, say, pollution is really bad. Well, uh, you might have something to do with that, mate, mightn't you? Now, that bike going down the bike lane there should not be going down that bike lane. He doesn't even count as a cyclist that should be in that lane. Now, this is King Street in Hammersmith. Now, that bike should have been behind me polluting the area like all the other cars are. Oh, look, one cyclist. Yay! We've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds for one fucking cyclist. I am being sarcastic. There is a couple more. Yes, a couple more. We've spent... Fa no, I won't do that again. Anyhow, we're driving down this road, King Street, and it almost makes me want to cry because this is where I was brought up and it looks nothing like where I was brought up. It just doesn't. Oh, look, another cyclist. Hey, another one. Now, I take a little detour here. I take a right turn because the guy that's in my car wants to be let off here. So I'm going to come around this bend here, stop at these double yellow lines, which I'm allowed to do being a professional driver. I'm allowed to stop here and let him out. So I've let out my customer and I will speed this up here a little bit. We're going to go back round in a bit of a loop to go back onto King Street. It's all one way, remember, which brings me to another problem with this cycle lane here. It's not one way for them, is it? So when I pull back out onto King Street in a second, once I go around here and then I'm heading towards King Street again, it's a two-way street for cyclists. So you've got to be very, very careful to actually look both ways because most of the time people coming out onto one-way streets look only one way. You shouldn't, not now with cyclists anyway, but people do. They, we know they do. But at least it's signposted here. It tells you that there's cyclists that's going to be crossing. So you've got to be looking out from. Oh, look, there's another one. There's another cyclist. Hey, it's worth it. It's worth, it really is. Oh, there's another one. And another one. Oh, it's so worth spending the thousands and thousands of pounds on a cycle lane for, how many is that now? Four, five cyclists that we've seen? Oh, it's well worth it, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be well worth the thousands and thousands of pounds that we spend on cycle lanes and all that pollution, all that lovely pollution. Oh, there's another one coming towards us as well. Uh, we, will we get the double figures? 
Oh, double figures for all them thousands of thousands of pounds. Oh, look, there's another one. Wow, they're mounting up. They are mounting up. But so is the pollution and so is the traffic behind me and the traffic in front of me. But don't worry about that. Oh, look, the cycle lane's gone over to the left-hand side now. So we've got to have a little, little swapsy. So now we come to a bus stop. They are called floating bus stops where the cyclists go the other side of the bus stop. Why they're called floating bus stops? Because the person who invented them had a floater one morning. And if you don't know what a floater is, it's when your ship won't go down the pan. It floats on top of the water and it spins round all day and it stays on top. So the person who invented this had a floater one morning and he couldn't get rid of it. And he thought, I know, I'm going to name that bus stop a floater. Which, to be fair, is a pretty good name because it's a shit idea from a shit person. Now... I'm going to stop it here because I got a little bit confused here because where all them buses are going, they're turning right going off to Acton and various other places. Straight on looks like, well, I don't know. It looks like there is no straight on anymore. I've got an illegal scooter coming towards me. Yeah, nothing ever gets done about them. There's this bike lane and that there is a right turn. Where's my lane? Uh, is that it there? They don't really want cars on this road, do they? At all. But the bike lane looks superb. Look at the bike lane. Look at the thousands and thousands of bikes in it. Oh, it it does. It fills you with pride, doesn't it? It fills you with pride what they're doing to this country. Oh, and oh, look, there's another floater. Yeah, there's another floating bus stop. Oh, goody, goody gumdrops. Oh, look, and there's a cyclist. There's another cyclist. Oh, we're doing well. I don't think we've hit double figures yet. Now, I want to be turning left. Now you have to creak your neck all the way back because obviously they have priority over you. So be very careful when you look round because don't just use your mirrors, use your head as well. So I'm going to freeze it here now because I'm going to go way off track again and we're going to go back to the war. Yes, we talked about D-Day and June the 6th and all of that and we're going to talk about this guy here. Now as I've got an old audience, as I've proved before, I'm sure some of you were around when this was going on. My mum and dad used to talk to me about what happened with the uh, air raids and the in the Blitz and all of that went with it. And it must have been absolutely terrifying of young kids being in an air raid shelter with the with bombs going off pretty much every night. My mum and dad was evacuated, but they wasn't evacuated you know, for the whole war. They did spend some of the time in London. And this is their plan. This was the Germans' plan. They have to get to our south coast get and take over our south coast before trying to get into London. They had to stop London, our capital. I mean, it makes perfect sense, really, to attack the capital, stop the capital, and the rest will follow. So they had a plan, send in the Luftwaffe and take over the south coast, and from the south coast, they can move up to London. It makes perfect sense. But what they underestimated and they didn't plan for was the resilience of the Brits and the Spitfire. Yes, the Spitfire and the resistance of the British people that were fighting back and we wouldn't be taken over. So the Germans come up with another idea. They were losing pilots left, right and centre. So what they thought about doing is building something that didn't need to have a pilot. So they came up with this thing that looked like a plane, but it wasn't a plane, it, wasn't, it didn't have a pilot in it but it did have a massive great big bomb in it called the buzz bomb or the doodle bug. And it used to fly over London and then all of a sudden the engine cut out on it and then it would go straight into London. Now, my mum and dad talked about this quite a bit. And no, it wasn't made by Audi. That's just me pissing about. But there they are. That's, there's, two, there's a couple there that uh, didn't go off, obviously. But they used to be terrifying, obviously. You're going over your house and then you know you can hear this horrible noise and then all of a sudden the noise stops and then where's it coming down now this is a map of where them doodle bugs buzz bombs whatever you want to call them landed that must have been absolutely terrifying now if they only had someone like him around then no one can bring London to a standstill better than this guy. They wouldn't have to use all them bombs, the death of pilots and all that. Just send him and we would be paying the idiot as well to do it. Just send him over from Germany straight in there. 
He could do a little bit of recruiting when he got here, got his mathematician. Just imagine, that was that there was almost our home secretary. Oh dear, that's scary stuff. Anyhow, if only he was about. I think it might have been a different story if he was about back then. There we are. They're laying reefs on London. They've destroyed London. Them two there and that East German athlete come spy on the end there who was our home secretary at one point. So maybe the invasion hasn't stopped yet. Maybe it's still carrying on. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please don't take this literally. It's supposed to be a bit of fun, a bit of tongue in cheek. Well, the, f the second part of it was anyway. The first part about D-Day landings and all of that sort of stuff, deadly serious, and we do need to give them the utmost respect. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.